Okay, I'd like to open the meeting at 6.30. I'd like to welcome the Cal Select Board here and also East Montpelier, East Montpelier Fire Department Emergency Services. This is a joint meeting between all three of us to work out some possible amendments to our contract. One thing I'd like to say before we get going is should we, this should this be under a um, executive, uh, not executive, under um, executive session? Executive session, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was questioning that. Yeah, and thank you. I should have said that in the agenda, possible yeah. executive session. I, I don't, the, the reason to hold an executive session for discussing a contract is to prevent one of the counterparties right. from hearing your strategy. And right. <laughs> I think the idea here is that we talk amongst the counterparties. So it is. I, I don't think we need the to. The only uh, um, caveat to that is if there's a reporter listening to us and they want to get into uh -huh. it in the paper, uh -huh. which could happen. Uh -huh. If you don't want to have that out there, it's, it's fine with it's me. Justi if you're going it's justified session. to go to executive exactly. session because it is a contract. That's right. Yeah. So that's up to you, everyone here. I don't have strong feelings either way. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm comfortable proceeding uh, in, in open, open meeting. If anybody raises a, a concern and wants to go in. I yeah, in the I fire department, you're OK with an open meeting? OK. And, and I would say, I, we, we have these nice signs here. Uh, I still haven't gotten to know all the Cala Select Board members. Uh, Recording could, in progress. Can we okay. do introductions? Sure. I'm, and I'm, we can introduce ourselves. Well, we have nameplates. We do. It's and not, for, for the minutes, should I document yeah. the minutes yeah. with everyone yes. here? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I will need your names for yeah. sure. Or at least just okay, go ahead, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Carl Etnair. Unmistakable. <laughs> oh, when, uh, now, now, now. Who are you? S C O T T H E S S, just like what member. Oh, uh, but, but I don't have a title. He, pr he, he pronounces it Scott Hess. Scott Hess. That's right. a difficult one. Seth Gardner. <laughs> Two syllables. Tom Brazier. <laughs> Zoe Christensen. Jordan Keyes, uh, Chair of Cal Select Board. Bill Davis. Now, just ask me a question. Is this two of you here, right? Uh, I believe we may so you don't have, have somebody else trying to zoom in. Oh, someone's zooming in? Hopefully. Oh. I guess I don't know. Should I turn um, off one of the lights? Is that Ann? Yeah, hit the switch. Is that Ann? No. No. Can't see. That's Okay. Is that too dark? Is that? Oh. I just did one if you what, want to make what's, a photo. What's your guys' pleasure? Lights it's a little dark. Let's put some lights on. Okay, perfect. No, no, um, no, no. If, okay. if we have any concerns, then we can we can uh, ratify at our at our next at our next meeting, uh, which is next Monday. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Ask. Except my name. Okay, we can keep going for the introductions. Um, I'm Rose Palchuk. I'm the um, Cala Select Board Recording Secretary okay. and longtime faithful, you know, person right here. You are. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Albert Petrala, Chief of EMFD. Alex Bogazewski, Board of Directors. Chief Copping, President, East Montpelier Fire. Uh, Paul Boyer, uh, Vice President, East, East Montpelier. Thomas Parker, Deputy Chief, East Montpelier Fire. Jennifer, Jennifer Devine, Town Administrator, East Montpelier. All right. <coughs> so, we're, we've got some clauses, correct, that Callis has proposed to change the contract that we have. So let's go over those, because that's why we're meeting. And let's see, which ones are they? I've got them written down here somewhere. Oh, it's 15, it says. There we go. Okay, so proposal for change is page two in this multi-page document called Changes Proposed by Cal Select Board April 23rd, 2024. <coughs> it's called the Interlocal Agreement between East Montpelier Fire Department Town of East Montpelier and Cal's. If you turn to page two, it says proposal for change. Is that correct? I think I'm... Uh, that's correct, right. yeah. And then the two changes, it's just two changes? Yeah. One in 15? That's correct. Right. So the initial term of the contract shall commence at midnight on July 1st, 2024. 
and shall renew itself for successive five-year terms unless notice of non-renewal shall be given in writing by one party to all other parties no later than 12 months prior to the initial termination date or the termination date of each successful renewer. This is going back to the original language. The reason, Callis, Callis, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to throw you on the bus. The reason they wanted to change this, it was two or three years ago, is they wanted the select boards, especially the Callis Select Board, to renew the to review the contract every year or two. Maybe it was every year. And, you know, that looks like it's more of a process than you folks want to engage in. Uh, certainly the select board, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was, uh, I think we, we understood the intent of yeah. what the edit, edits were, but it was kind of getting things more confusing and more complicated than they really needed to be. And then it started to seem like the timelines for renewal be between the three different documents that kind of govern the relationship were kind of getting out of continuity un unnecessarily. So we just wanted to simplify it and then kind of the nature of the additional um, clause that we're proposing is to just provide a clear process for reviewing um, or uh, or considering changes. Um, That's number 15. Yeah, number 15. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's just talk about number one. Sure. Yep. So what is the fire department emergency services? What do you think about that change on number one? So I personally am okay with that particular change. Uh, the only thing to make sure I understand it right, that at year two or three, nobody, even with a year's notice, can back out. You have to wait till that fourth year, at the beginning of the fourth year. So that's a five-year, duration of five-year contract. No, that's not what I get out of it. I get out of it, it along with Clause 15, is you, get a, you have to give a year's notice, basically, to get out of the five-year contract. So there we go with, we're already not clear, whose interpretation value from this. So we need to figure out if we're going to renew in five Even years, or we're going to renew yearly, or three years is still not nope. clear. It shall renew itself for five years, every for successive five-year terms, unless notice of non-renewal shall be given in writing by one party to all other parties no later than 12 months prior to the initial termination date or the terminates of each successive renewal. Actually, but there so again, if you read yeah. every five years, you can only yeah. have a year before. Yeah. So that's that's be your change. It's, it's helpful to read contract language a lot. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're right in yeah. that. Oh, right, yeah. So really, what should be said is that it takes one year notice and to get the dates. It's one year notice. No, that's not no. how it means. No, you renew? Yeah. Yeah. Automatically renew. May I speak? Let's, yeah, well, let me follow my yeah. Yeah, yeah. Automatically renew every five years. When? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Unless we give one year's notice. I agree. Uh, so, year three, you can't renew it. Year four, you can give one year's notice. And, uh, I'm sorry, year three, you can't block renewal. Right. Year four, you can say, okay, we want out at the end of, the end of the this year. Contract. Yeah. That's the way it reads. Yeah. So that's the way it reads, but yeah. That's not okay, yeah, Paul. The other thing you need to consider is that we have other contracts with other towns that if you back out a year from now, yeah. Uh, we have other contracts that we have to meet that don't line up with the dates okay. of, of this contract. All right. So that needs to be considered on the yeah. timing if somebody wants to back out. That's right. And, and right. if you do it at one year's notice, that's not going to work. That's not going to work for these other towns. You know, we right. may not be able to, pro to yeah. provide that contract if you back out. Right. That's right. That's a good point. If I could, that, that's kind of the, the impetus of this, is we're, we're looking for more stability rather than the way it's written now would allow any party to get out and much shorter notice, just a few months. So that's Kari Bradley, a town administrator for Calisu. Sorry, I'm late. But. All right, so. So if you want a longer term, I think we're open to discussing Longer, our interest is yeah, stability. Yeah. Right. I mean, stability is great, but some flexibility in the length of the contract is also a good idea. 
So we're trying to melt the two things together. Yep. What I'm wondering, if, given what you just said, Paul, would it make sense to just take a look at the various contracts that the fire department has with various towns, see when their expiration dates are, what the provisions are for renewal, and see what it would look like to write our contracts so it lined up with, with them, or to see if they're lined up with themselves. I, I don't know whether they are or not with each other. It's certainly an for discussion, yeah. 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 So I think with a, a five-year term, as the other contracts renew, the fire department board could build that into it so it would align with those dates. Mm. So if you have that would, five, that would make the most sense to me. But a five-year contract, to me, gives stability to both towns and the fire department. Yeah, I'm not worried about the five-year contract, but I'm worried about you know when you can get notice for non-renewal. Can you give it at year three, four, or two, or one, or zero, well, or whatever? The, I guess for us, it's knowing when the contract expires. Yeah. That's the valuable piece. Yeah. Now, you can give a notice of non-renewal tomorrow, but the contract is in effect until five years from now. Right. You can't back out of the contract. Right. Yeah. And it's a breach. So yeah. personally, the, the verbiage of giving notice, if you really feel like you made a mistake and you know it, and a year and a half into the contract, you say, just so you know, we're not renewing. We want out, but that's good for that five-year period. Well, that's probably okay, right? Yeah. So that's a five-year, it's a five-year stint, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll taking the other one. Yeah. You're just have to give a notice sometime. Yeah. Right? A year before well, the right. five-year is done. Or right. There needs to be a minimum. Be, right. A minimum. It could be right. a year or two, but it's still five years down. As long as there's a one-year period. A minimum has to be a year before. Correct. Right. Yes. At a right. minimum. So we can leave that then. Yeah, except no later. Later. put in the minimum. Just put yeah, in. No it's already in there. It's already in there. No later than 12 months prior. Yeah. It's already yeah. in there. I just need a thumbnail. <laughs> so you're okay with that thing? I guess I am too. I mean, it gives you stability in your dealings with other towns to know if the contract is going to end. And it would know. behoove you to try to line the timing. And I, I would right. think our goal would be to line the yeah. other towns up too. Yeah. So that we can get on the same side. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I got a question for you. Okay. Um, we're still dealing with one. Yep. Okay. Um, you were the one that seemed to be the one that didn't understand it. Me? So is this is this worded correctly? Is this worded clearly? Because you well, were, no, you what were, I you said, been, I, I understand it now what we're trying right. to do. Right, but is it clear enough so that if somebody else, other than our board, say different members come in on our board, is it clear enough I think it's fine. to keep it the way it is? Or should yeah. it be cleared up even more? Because the chairman here didn't understand it. That's what I'm saying. I go on record by being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that our go on the paper. That's okay. <laughs> and our attorney reviewed this uh, yeah. months ago. It was confusing to him. So yeah, okay. There, there was too much. Yeah. Okay. Part of it. <laughs> part he's, part he's of it. To me, I know. As we write the new contract, we got to eliminate all the historical dates. Right. Because going yeah. back to say right. in the interlocal agreement of 2010, I, I agree. Right. and you know right. that's irrelevant. That's I a know. done and void contract. Yeah, yeah. This is as right. of now. this date, the 2024. Right. Right. As of July. It's a five-year right. contract. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's fine. Why? Why did the attorney have trouble with the language or understanding? I it? think for the same reason we just have trouble with the language. Yeah. Too many months, dates, years. <laughs> Do it. So if you just took continuing it for three years, but you can get out of it one year, and it was, yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of, you know, it's, it's well, not a difficult document. Well, Dallas was concerned that the this year's contract expired at the end of last year. Yeah. Because they would, the way they read it, it shall renew for year one, year two, and they were looking at the dates. I'm like, well, no. Yeah. Year one is after the day we sign it. Then you got three years to go. So it's not going to be back. It. So it's not going to be back to the future. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But so if we just leave number one in isolated, 
this. I mean, if we're agreed on the concept, we can work on the language. I mean, I just threw together here. After the initial term, the contract will automatically renew for successive five-year periods unless one party provides written notice of a non-renewal to all other parties. This notice must be given at least 12 months before the end of the current term, whether it is the initial term or a renewal term. I think that's yeah. a little easier to yeah. understand, but we, we can play with it. Yeah, definitely. He's probably cheaper than their lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you assume such things? Because I, I have faith in Carl. You don't know how much they charge charged him. Maybe less, zero. Less than Carl. See, assumption. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're good on that. If we have to change the language, but we all understand the concept, I think it's fine. It must okay. be true. I'm sneezing. Okay. <laughs> you can chat y'all like that. Okay, number 15. If at any time one of the parties to this agreement wishes to change any of its provisions, the party shall give notice in writing to the other parties at least two months prior to the next joint meeting, stating the reason for the proposed change and suggested language. Upon receiving such notice, each small the fire department shall place the item on the agenda for the next joint meeting. Upon a positive vote of all three of the parties to the agreement, the change shall be incorporated into the agreement. So the only um, comment I want to make about that was including changes to the cost allocation portion of the agreement. To me, that's going to be problematic, especially as we build budgets and if one of the parties wants to change the cost allocation, say January 1st or December when we have our meeting, that's problematic, especially as we go into the budget process. Because we're always doing budgets in December. We're always pressing you for, so maybe um, we need to change that date of that part of it or change that, take that out. So we need to discuss that, yes. Yeah. I understand that reasoning, and this uh, clause gives each of the three parties a veto power over any changes. So I'm thinking if somebody proposes a change in cost allocation at a time that <coughs> doesn't work, then we could just say no. But I think the reason that we put the, wherever we were doing the cost allocation change, wherever that was, there was good reason to put it in that way for the budget process. Well, and I also think, given back to this, the history of the Tablon comment, because the, the date verbiage was so confusing in the last contract that nobody really could say when it expired. Yeah. Was it last year or this year? Yeah. To make that change and clean that paragraph up, We're it seemed like the contract was written and you couldn't edit your own, the, make little typo adjustments until the contract expired. What she wants to do is say, hey, yeah. this one paragraph's not clear. Yeah. We noticed that. We all agree. Yeah. So let's no, get I notice, that part of it. clean it up. and I understand that part of it. It's just the cost allocation part of it, it makes me nervous because it's willy-nilly when that can happen. That, that should and be, I don't think willy-nilly is a good idea yeah, when we're talking about budgets. I think that's part of the base contract that you shouldn't be able to adjust until. And that, how many times are we going to adjust it? It's like, yeah, well, I, I think that there should be like a, we usually start the budget process in October, but usually by the end of November we've got a pretty good handle. Yeah, what we want to do. So I think that if you said that it can only be between August and November. Yeah, for the next year. Well, I think, I that's think everybody set up that would way. Be, it was set up. You it was set up that way, but it's yeah not real clear yeah but i think it needs to be cleaned up so that it would be because it it would not work well if say uh like you said january or february yeah. they came or december and, even or even december yeah. and said you know hey we need we want to change this cost allocation and so far so i'm looking at the uh, 2013 cost allocation agreement and it states that we are to be reviewing the allocation every year yeah and by december 1st agree to it right and has that been happening no. or are we just stuck with the two-thirds one-third we had so, stuck with the two-thirds one-third it, it was uh, under a lot of discussion when we did it because originally maintenance was 25 percent and this was a third so we had some joint meetings. We changed it to one third, a standard thing, because you're trying to figure out: is it based on call volume? Is it based on population? You know, there's a lot of moving parts to it. So I think that's why we kind of stuck with it. 
it seems like it was the fairest way to do it. And, and, and I think that's, just to finish up, yeah, sure. just to, I think that's fine, but we shouldn't have both documents referring to the cost allocation, I think. I, I agree with you that mm -hmm. maybe it makes sense to exclude cost allocation yeah, because there's a separate agreement for that. So I, I think that should, and the other thing about the cost allocation, it's a moving target. So are you going to say twice a year, oh, we don't really agree with the cost allocation because there was more calls last month in East Montpelier or vice versa. Right. I just don't think that's a productive use of our time is that we could review it once a year as per the document that we already have. But I think that's what we need to do. Yeah, and it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of these documents is that, that the cost allocation is an agreement between East Montpelier and, and Calis yeah. um, for, uh, for yeah. distributing the, uh, the cost. So that, that is automatically re renewing every year with a, yeah. with a, 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 base, a basic one-third, two-thirds mm -hmm. condition in there until we feel like there's sufficient cause to revisit okay. that and, and, and look at it some other way. Right. Um, the I think interlocal is, is between yeah. the three parties, so yeah. Um, we, yeah. So I mean, I, I'm okay if, with this 15 if we take out the cost allocation discussion that, that we would be having willy-nilly, I feel. Well, I think I'm, I'm a little uncertain, um, and we don't have it in our, uh, on the website at least, to review, but this 2013 document that Kari was just referring to, yeah. that, that's a contract between the two towns without the fire department, and that has a cost allocation in it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if that's where yeah. the cost allocation is handled, then we don't need to say that it's excluded uh, in a clause in the interlocal agreement, because the, the clause in the interlocal agreement only refers to the interlocal agreement. Yeah, but still, I mean, when you say well, that, the only part, the only part where I think that it could make sense to have some alignment or at least some <coughs> regular discussion is that it can inform what kind of terms we want to put in the uh, in the interlocal agreement, so that you know when we're receiving budget considerations from uh, from the fire department um, that. That, that that's that's being taken into consideration with the cost allocation. You know, so if we want want to see a particular standard of, of reporting at a particular date or accounting for uh, for certain funding, then then we're then that's getting worked into the interlocal uh, agreement. But. I, I might be overcomplicating. Uh, I'm, I'm not following. I mean, if I take out a, a car loan from a bank, yeah. then um, there's no sense in a provision in the car loan being tailored to um, you know, Scott's mortgage, for example. Um, they're, they're separate agreements. Yes, sir. I just, when I reread that to myself, there again, confusion. Everybody interprets things differently. When I read section 15, I feel like it almost can, in essence, trump number one, because it mentions any provision of the contract can be called into question with just two right. months' notice. Yeah. So the contract, to me, seems like it's a two month contract because yeah. <laughs> right. tomorrow you could show up and say, we got a problem with this, we're giving you no two months' notice with the contract, and then all of a sudden, we got we got issues. But but again, so, everybody has a veto. I, I know, it's, but I, I feel but like still, yeah. the the parts that you can change of the contract should be spelled with two months notification, and the parts that you can't mess yeah. with in the contract until the contract expires right. or doesn't get renewed yeah. should be spelled out. But you can't you know? change anything in the contract unless all three parties agree to it. And, and there can't be any termination without the 12 months notice. So there, there is. There wouldn't be a point at which, just because we didn't agree on an edit, that that the contract is somehow void. Or, right. You know, okay. I, I mean, is there any way to change the language that would clarify that the provisions that 15 refers to are just, um, as some way to specify that it doesn't refer to the entire contract? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would say yes, there is, and I'm not sure it's desirable. I think if something came up that made all three parties say, you know, we want to just stop this exactly. next year exactly. or in six months from now, uh, that we should have the flexibility to do it. Right. But again, everybody has a veto has agree. over that. Right. It has yeah. to be unanimous. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why, why, why wouldn't you give the leverage? Yeah. Yeah. 
So you want to leave the cost allocation portion of the agreement in there? I don't think the, it's, not in there. it's not in there. It's, it's not in there. there. That was just it's, that oh, was it's just the introduction. That was just verbiage right. in the introduction. Right, 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 right. right. Except, right. except for um, paragraph ten of the contract, which is about the cost allocation of capital expenditures. That's okay. So we're not editing ten. So. No, but if if, oh, there, see, if there's a separate yeah. agreement between Callus and East Montpelier that has cost allocation in it, one third, two thirds for operating funds, I guess, um, yeah. and this one has capital expenditures, I, I don't quite understand the logic for having those two in different contracts. There's a third document. <laughs> yeah, I remember. This not this not superseded. I, I don't believe so, and okay. it has to do with capital. Has to do with the uh, ownership of this building. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. That one. I am yeah. 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 But we're not discussing that tonight. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is getting into the weeds. Um, <clears throat> so you're talking about ten as capital expenditures. Yeah. So until Callis and East Montpelier agree so i mean this is funny because it's an interlocal agreement amongst the three entities but this paragraph is explicitly only an agreement between Callas and east montpelier and that's just kind of weird but because mm. in some of the other documents it specifies that that Callas and east montpelier are the primary recipients of the of the services of the fire department uh -huh. um, so I, I think when when read across all three documents, it starts to make sense. But I I don't disagree. I, I think there's kind of a squishiness in, in the language of all three documents that is problematic. Yeah. And, you know, especially when it comes to uh, capital improvement funding, and uh, it, it just could get cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but I, well, you know, for, that's more than what we're going to bite off. <laughs> so let's look at 50. Eating an elephant. So what are we thinking about 50? <clears throat> if at any time one of the parties to this agreement wishes to change any of its provisions, the party shall give notice in writing to the other parties at least two months prior to the next joint meeting, stating the reasons for the proposed change and suggested language. Upon receiving such notice, East Montpelier Fire Department shall place the item on the agenda for the next joint meeting. Upon a positive vote of all three of the parties to the agreement, the change should be incorporated into the agreement. Huh. See. Yeah, and I know what Ann's thinking was when she was talking to me about it. Technically, you can't even change a typo in this agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. I with, that. Without right. that notice. And yeah. that was what she wanted to get away from. Yeah. yeah. But the problem is that when you start putting language like this out there, it's broader than just typos. Uh, I understand that. <laughs> what I'm saying is maybe we need to clarify some of that. Yeah, I, yeah. You know but what I mean? I, and I'm fine with it being broader than typos. I'm fi fine with it being terminated in the contract because every single party can veto it. Hmm. So unless we collectively all lose our minds, it's not a problem. Right. Yeah, but that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, but then, then no contract could save us. <laughs> I don't know. What do you all, What do you guys all think? Or what does everyone think? I mean, that the idea of the any party has the right to veto, that makes it... It gives you protection. Yeah, yeah. it gives yeah. you protection. Right, right. it does give you protection. So, but I like no. the idea of being able to make, sometimes you find something, you're yeah. under the contract, that it's really not working. Right. Can there's, we there's make no the change and we yeah. agree? Can right. we make the changes? I mean, I think the intent is definitely for relatively small changes. Yeah. It's just that we're raising the question of it's open to big changes. So what Kyle is saying is we could veto the big changes, you know, if we all have veto power. There's no supermajority, which is what, what you don't want. Yeah. Right. 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 I'd say we veto the dumb changes, whether they're big or small. <laughs> no, yeah. Put that language Okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm okay with it. You know, we have protection. We understand the intent. I'm okay with it. As long as everyone else is. I mean, no one has raised strenuous objections except myself about the cost allocation <laughs> possibility, which I, you know, we are we do have some protection on that front. Right. I think I think the changing any of the provisions language was sort of very broad to me at first, 
especially yeah. in contrast to the other clause. But I think with the veto power that Carl mentioned, it does make me feel better about yeah. it. I think if the language was cleaned up and take the dates that shouldn't be there out of the contract, so it actually reads the way a contract should be read, I think that it would be fine. Yes, well, yeah, Albert. That's what this would do, right? Yeah. Who, yeah. yeah. Who is going to be the master edit to read, type up the new interlocal agreement then? So that then it comes back to each organization to review and right. prove. There should be a lawyer. It shouldn't be that. Yeah. It shouldn't be that complicated, but it, you should have a lawyer sign off on it. Yeah. You should have a lawyer sign off on it. Yeah. After, it after you get it, you've got to give it to each one of the attorneys. And well, you have the right to. We'll give it to our, we'll give it to our attorney. Right. And you guys have well, the right to Well, why don't we just this. give it to our attorneys and draft it up? Yeah. Oh. And, and then you, and then they review. Your attorney and then we we'll give it to them. And they and can, they can do whatever they want with it. Right. Yeah. They want not, to whatever they want, they can review it. <laughs> <laughs> no, my point is they don't. Language, my everybody. point is they don't have to give it to the attorney to review if they don't want to. But they they probably would. I mean, they got to do their due diligence, don't we? Yeah, don't. Sure. We I, I, do I, I don't vote for this. I don't vote for their select board. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that but jumps can, out at me is that this number fifteen was yeah. proposed, and there is already a paragraph fifteen in the contract, I confess that I don't understand exactly its significance. This contract may not be ass assigned by any party without the concurrence of the other parties. So one of the questions I would ask a lawyer is, what does that language mean? Is that captured in this new number 15? And uh, if not, do we want to retain it in the contract? You probably do, actually. I would think yeah, so, I think you but. I think you do. The yeah. old 15, we need to keep that in. Absolutely. Yeah. 16 yeah. and then. Sure. And it's going to be 16. Or this, no, that's the new 15, and then 16 would be the old. <coughs> yeah. So, yes. right. one other while we're tinkering with this, I'm sorry I didn't identify this earlier, but if you're looking at the agreement number 12, yeah, refers to a list of capital items, capital um, equipment. In Appendix C, which there is an in Appendix C, and that is a, I assume, very outdated list of equipment, and doesn't seem like it should be an appendix to me. It should, seems like it should be, and in fact, it's referred to in Number Five, the annual report that the fire department provides, it makes sense. including yes. a budget and, and your capital <coughs> plan. It seems like it could be incorporated <coughs> into there, and then. And then we all know what the current list of, of capital equipment is. Mm. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's just an update and putting it into five. No, that's great. That's a, that's a great suggestion. No, yeah, I don't know if that's too hard Any more breaks? Okay, so do you, do you uh, the spouse, want to send this off to a lawyer and get the language changed? We're happy to have you draft it. But you want us to? <laughs> <laughs> I think the big question is who has the editable version of this? Yeah, yeah I think it may have to be created. Yeah. Or this, this oh, the actual, the original interlocal, I think. Yeah. It must exist. I think I'm sure we all have yeah, yeah, but the yeah. electronic but as a, version. As a, as a Word document. Yeah. 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 It's, it's been a problem finding such documents. Did you reveal it? You did. Yeah. Because yeah. we yeah. got that bill, and I said, wait, don't pay it. I, I think we'll, we can discuss that now. I, I will volunteer to run it through an OCR program. Okay. Yeah. It's got to exist in a word. But it's going to have to wind up at, at our board. Yeah. 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 So we'll but it'll be editable when, yeah. when I'm done with right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So right. the question is, before it goes to our lawyers, then we need to be thinking about this, this issue that Paul raised and the lining up of the other contracts. So how, how do we get information from the fire department about the other town so, contracts that you have? Well, they're going to line it up. Yeah. yeah. Point yeah. 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 So, that's so their one. Oh, okay. Right. So this will be the master one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's on the right. contract for right. renewal. Okay. Yeah. If they don't want to do anything about it, that's their. Well, they can change. Yeah. The, okay. They can change it and make them line up. Make them line up or not? Or okay. not? Okay. Well, we, it's we, a, it's a yeah, we would ask it's them to do that. Yeah. Of course, no, because because uh, we don't want them to have us over a barrel, having them over a barrel. Oh. <laughs> but there's always the veto power. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You guys okay with that? Yeah. As far as trying to align the dates, you mean? 
Yeah, so yeah. As, as your current contracts with other towns run out, then you renew them in a way that the dates line That's up with that. that. Yeah, I know. That would yeah. be my goal, yeah. if we can make it work that way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Because then it, it just, it gives everybody that That's sense of yeah. security. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to do it. Right. You know, okay. It's, it's be there for the free world. Not really. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was a good point that you brought up, but yeah. you can do that when you do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that's part of this, but related, unrelated, the capital expenses. Yeah. Okay. Um, I saw the bill. What was the bill? It's for fixing the, the fixing the pellet boiler. The pellet boiler, yeah. Yeah. And you so, have to put a new one in, or what? It was. Just the the, bur the whole burner and the yeah. brick liner part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we haven't paid those bills in the past. I know, but when we talked about at a previous board meeting uh -huh. or joint meeting, because yeah. I know we were at in, yeah. at your, in your town hall, and yeah. we talked your about suit. how we yeah, yeah yeah true you're right it is mine I'm a resident. Um, we talked about how we replaced the well pump and it cost this much, and we yeah, got yeah. the sewer lift station right. and it cost that much. Yeah. And then you you said you should have brought those bills to us and we would have helped pay for it. So I thought to myself, I'll bring the bill to you yeah. and you help pay for it. Right. And then I was told, no, you won't. We won't help pay for it. Well, I and okay. So, so wait a minute. I wanted to make sure whatever we're doing, we're doing it correctly. Yeah. And I do not remember paying any bills for the fire department up to now. And, I regard I'm not, repair. I'm not sure if we've had any big ticket items You've had from some. doing the building. You've had some fixing and doing this. Well, no, fixing, but nothing yeah. of a major expense. So, like, I, to me, you know, two or three thousand um, dollars. That's not a consumable item. Like, we had to replace the air handling filters, special carbon ones. Yeah. Cost us ten grand. Oh. Well. We paid for that because, to me, that's like a consumable. But this bill is only five. But I know. It was four and something. Four something. So yeah. that's why I was that's like, all. I'm confused here, so that's why I said to Jen, don't pay. Yeah. So, and but I'm willing to discuss it. Okay. Right. Right. Yes, Rose. I recall um, Bruce Johnson said that there was some leftover bond uh, money. Yeah, it's that's all, all spent. They okay. spent, that's on been the, spent. Yeah. We just said enough of this. Yeah. There was a little money left. All right. I was just saying, I think our take on it was that the only monies that Callis is providing are voter approved. Yeah. So there's nothing happening outside of the normal mm -hmm. town meeting cycle, unless right. it's a special meeting. Yeah. But I do see in seven that there is a contingency fund, and I would assume no, that, that is, is where you would go for these emergency requests. Unless yeah, we need to change it. This yeah. is outside that. So, okay. So let's get back to that deal. That you're saying that you can take out a contingency fund. What they're saying, I said, was we would help them with capital expense items that come up unexpectedly, correct? Okay. So, and I thought that we had said that you needed to get a fund going in your capital fund that would go towards maintenance of the building. Did that happen? We do have um, a line in our capital yeah. fund to cover that. Right. Yeah. So well, we, we figured as we technically don't own the building, we use the building, and yes, there's no <laughs> official lease. Or yeah, whatever. We don't true. pay to use the building, yeah. but we felt that between the two towns, yeah. that as some of the bigger ticket items, yeah. like when the roof has to get replaced, yeah. that we yeah. could come up with a mutually agreeable yeah. funding solution, say, okay, you know, the Callis will pay 20% of that, uh -huh. East Montpelier Fire Department pays 20 and uh -huh. you pay 60 is, or whatever, you know. Yeah, but none of this is in black and white, nothing. The only thing that I remember talking about was is you establishing something in your capital reserve to cover repairs. And you said, just said to me that you do have a fund. How much is in there? Well, we do it annually. We don't do, okay. we don't do a kitty and... Right. It's just every year there's in our line item, I think, it's either 10 or 15 grand uh -huh. towards Repair. Uh, different or things. Yeah. Well, I don't think that us, I don't think there's a precedent for us paying that bill, that the $4,000 something dollar bill. Would everyone agree on that? I mean, there was never, I never remember paying a bill for the fire department, splitting it one third 
Okay. Well, there's always a first. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it doesn't mean well, to be a first, and a first is a precedent. The only reason why I, the only reason why I pushed at our level yes. to bring this up tonight was because of what you said. Bring okay. the build up, and, and Carl uh, said, we own the building, and we're responsible for capital items. Okay. So, <laughs> so in the okay. past, that's yeah. the reasons why this is being brought up to the okay, extent. Okay, no, that's a good idea to bring it up, and yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. But I, I hope you appreciate the fact that I just didn't pay the bill because I was like, this is a precedent we didn't talk about. Well, I, can, I ended up paying the bill pay. yeah. to make sure it got paid. I know, yeah. and then we can right. figure out. Right, and yeah. that's what we're trying to do right now. Yeah, well, but all the, together in one room. But the other, the other thing. Out. Um, in the past, we've had some money left over from the bond. It's gone. And we've That's used that for paying this sort exactly. of thing. Yeah. So now we're in new territory. We're in new territory. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, so the yes. Thing that yeah. Yes, Paul. Who are you calling? What's that? Uh, I'm looking back there and I see hands being So the other thing, too, that, you, that the, the amount of that bill and the amount of other items that came up on us this year yeah. that we have to pay for are not in the budget nope. that we have to pay for. Yeah. That's that's one of them. Yeah. And the other one is this uh, tax that the state started July first that we, that we get hit with that we, that's not in, in your budget. Okay. That we have to come up with that money. Okay. We lost an engine. Um, we we had a, a a big expense on our rescue truck that we had to take out of capital. So you know there, there's there's a limit on how much of that capital account that you can draw from and still maintain that. In the future, if things start continue to break, we got to have money to pay for it. Yeah. And, and and we all need to share, and especially this particular bill, because we don't own this building. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not in our budget to pay for that item. It, like I said, though, this is the first bill that we've had of that nature come across our desk. I did not want to establish a precedent by starting to pay bills based on a one third, two third split. Dallas wouldn't appreciate that if we called them up and said, hey, you got to give us 1500 bucks," And they're like, what? So this is why we're having the discussion, yeah. to figure out what we do as we move forward. Yeah, yes. I think yes, you raised a good point. As, as in Kari, you know, we're, as, as a select board, we're, we're bound by what we get town approval to, yeah. uh, to pay towards and contribute towards. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I, I like the idea of, of having uh, some structure in the accounting um, so yeah. that if we make an agreement to make our one-third, two-third contributions every year relative to a certain amount going into, you know, a, 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 a building maintenance fund or some sort of capital improvement fund in, in that way so that, you know, there's, there's some accounting for it. But on the other side, I think we're going to have to likely see see that that accounting process play out and, and fund balances you know when when we do our annual report I mean and, and, it, and if you have to pull out or over uh, you know shoot over a budget or pull funds from somewhere else at least we we yeah. know and then we can work that well they have a contingency fund in, yeah it's a 45,000 40. 40 40 so that does give that protection when we come up to the budget se season we'll see that they had to use that Sure. And they will reflect, you know, there'll be a discussion about what gets paid for and how much money they need from us and from you. Yeah. Um, that seems like a cleaner way to handle it. But what they're saying, though, is that who's going to handle the maintenance of this building that the town actually owns? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Or the town's own. Because Callis owns one third of it, even though I've always argued that it was a poor investment for Callis own real estate in these months. But that's <laughs> up to you guys. <laughs> I think that would have, there should have been a better way of establishing. It might, it might have a higher return on investment, so it could be a I good financial thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But anyway, um, so that's the question is who's going to pay for the maintenance of the town owned building? And I think that's what yeah, you're saying. And, right. And we believe we should pay our share. But yeah. we also think, because as like Paul said, the as the expense of things yeah. Skyrocket. Are just are skyrocketing, yeah. we feel that our capital funds right. will be, be unsustainable going forward. And without uh, a 
a regular contribution from both towns to say, hey, we understand, we see that, then we can, then, you know, and that's something else I want to bring up as part of tonight's discussion, is that whether I develop a capital budget where I spell out some of the things I want to get, so you guys see that as part of our, my operating budget, because right. we don't do that right now. There's really no capital yeah. budget. Um, there's, there's money there. Yeah. But it's not delineated. But I don't look at that money like, oh, I got 200000 Let's go out and buy yes. and do this tomorrow, because then I can't pay for all the other debt no, I no, have. I yeah. you know? And so one of it is either create a capital budget, so you, got, you folks are aware of what I anticipate to spend for the following year, capital. Um, but also to talk about, right now we're authorized, and I don't think it's in the interlocal, but it's in some other agreement. $20,000 today doesn't cut it anymore for the price of what stuff has become. Mm -hmm. That 20000 came into play probably year one of the contract, and that back then probably was quite a bit of money to say, hey, we can go out and buy, spend 20000 um, Today, I can't do, I mean, turnout gear, alone is $5,000 a set probably to fully equip somebody. So if I bring in two new firefighters, I got to get them new gear, there's right. half my money, capital, I can spend without, you know, coming and asking for permission to exceed. So that's another thing to talk about or think about. And I'm not saying the decision has to be made tonight, but to give right. us a little more um, authority to, to go up to 25 or 30, Annually to purchase. Oh, right. You know, take out of the capital budget without right. the site board approval. Right. Yeah. All right. I, I think that's a great point. That's, so that is in the interlocal. It's number seven. Yeah. And, and it, I think if if you want to change the terms of you know not after being um, limited to twenty thousand or if that if that contingency fund should be more than forty <coughs> in, in today's dollars, I, that makes a lot of sense to us. I think. But at this point in time, for purposes of our discussion tonight. I think it's more appropriate that we, when we have our meetings about the budget, we work out these changes or whatever. Yeah. And this, and getting back to that bill, I mean, you've already paid the bill. Yeah. I think it's we need to discuss it at our budget process meetings about what we're going to do in the future about the maintenance of the bill. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to figure it out tonight. Yes. Right. Does it? Make sense to try to keep those those funds separate. Uh, I mean, you bring up a, a good point about the building being different than equipment, and the, yeah. how problematic it is for that to be one pot of money. And then if there's a bunch of building stuff that needs to be done, and it hamstrings your ability to respond to buying equipment that's needed for for the operation and the service right. side. And so. Sounds well, it makes to me like, sense to have the. I, I think we just need to really try to delineate between yeah. building, building related. Right. I mean, we've improvements never. Improvements and expenses. We, we haven't figured out what to do about the big ticket items on the building. Right. So that's 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 what we need to talk about. Yeah. Well, we're not going to figure it out tonight. No. But we will. But I, I I would suggest as the year goes by that you pay the bills, and we'll figure out what to do in, in the budget. Session that we have. Yes, Paul. So, would the two boards consider um, contributing toward that forty-two fifty for that bill that we just paid? I, um, I say no. I say you pay the bill. When it gets to the budget process, we'll figure out what we're going to do. So let me add, let me throw something by you. Okay. Uh, I do not. I don't want to establish a precedent. No, I understand bills that. that as, as long as we understand that this is going to be a discussion coming up at the, in the budget issue it will. after this year. Yep. As long as that's clear. That's clear. But let me throw something by you. Uh, because if we, we, some of us feel that, that this is a capital item for a building we, the department doesn't own yep. and is run by volunteers. Yep. Okay. We're contributing 30000 of our capital money now okay. towards the budget. Yeah. Can we use 4250 of that? Towards the, the extra fifteen that we have to put in. So, you want so instead of putting in the extra fifteen that you that you wanted us to, how come you just don't take the forty-two fifty out of your contingency fund and we'll worry about it when we get there? Well, no, you're missing my point here. Okay. Rather than putting in 30, the 15, 
couple of years ago, and then yeah. you got another 15 this year. Yeah. So thirty thousand dollars out of the annual revenue. Right. So yeah. instead of contributing the fifteen thousand, yeah. we'll contribute the uh, ten fifty. Yeah, I don't really like to do that either. That's just not a very clean way of doing it. Why can't you just? But take again, it, it's it kind of. It puts, it, it, you're putting us in a position, we're paying a lot of expenses here uh -huh. that we don't have any control over. Okay. And, it, it, and it's not like it's an unlimited source of money here. Um, we understand that, but we we are also in the position of discussing the budget when we get to it. And you have the funds to pay those bills now. So you pay the funds now out of the contingency fund, and we'll worry about replacing that money when we get to the budget cycle. Well, we would but have to clean away and doing the business. But you have to, we have to replace it anyway. Because you have to keep it at forty thousand dollars, right? So I guess what I'm saying is not costing the town any more money. I'm saying that from the you know, town's not paying it. I you understand. say you have to maintain forty thousand. They say do. That they the account balance shall not exceed. They will replace that um, in the next budget cycle if they have to draw. On. But it has to be forty thousand. They have to get it back to forty thousand. And the way they've done that is from the annual revenue. No, I, I'm, I'm reading it. Yeah, it yeah. says shall not exceed. It doesn't say it has to be maintained at 40 million. Shall not exceed. Yeah, it say it we did, I, I just think from an accounting point of view that you need to pay the bill and keep it clean. Take it out of the maintenance fund that you've established in your capital reserve. Is that correct? You have one. I just, I just think that both towns need to think about yeah. the, the funding for this building as big ticket items. I agree. Like I agree when, if we got to pave the apron out front, you know that that could yeah. wipe out my whole capital budget. I understood. And so, right. you know, how we yeah. identify and and maybe you folks build, you know, a, a capital budget for the fire department for future major expenses, and you put ten thousand a year into it, and it sits there until. We agree and come forward and say, okay, we need that money now, and you guys authorize it and release it. Yeah, but, but you know, we, we still need to talk about that at the yeah. time we are establishing. Yes, I, I hear, yeah. And I'm just trying to get to that point. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to pay that bill or have you take money out of an agreement that we've already established. We established that you can contribute 15000 15000 $30,000 into the budget from your ambulance revenue. I don't want to subtract money from that. That's not a clean way of accounting. Yeah. No, I, can, I, can I ask a naive question because yeah. I'm new to this process? When you say you, when you say it's our money, it's a 501c3, so if you don't have enough money in this $40,000 capital reserve fund, contingency, um, fund. contingency fund, and you exhaust that fund, what, do, what are you shortchanging? Are you shortchanging salaries? Are you shortchanging Air conditioning. I'm 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 asking because I'm naive about. Well, the whole the whole idea of that contingency is at the end of the year, if we have right. expended every dollar, and we get twelve thousand dollars worth of bills come in, that contingency is there to withdraw that twelve grand okay. to settle all our debt, and then next year, the first month the ambulance revenue comes in, it gets split twenty five seventy five. 25% goes back into contingency to build that up back up, yep. and 75 goes into capital. My, my, I guess my question is, what is shortchanged if you exhaust that fund? If you spend all that money today, what is being shortchanged? It would what, probably spread out. Yeah. It, we might short shortchange salary. We might shortchange... That's never happened. Calls. Never happened in the past. Does it mean things <coughs> won't happen in the future? Okay. Or we get a $25,000 bill tomorrow. So if you just exhaust, to understand if you exhaust the all the money, the $40,000, and you spend all the two hundred and eleven dollars the town's writing your check for right now, and then all the money that Cal's gives you, and you don't make it to the end of the year, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. They probably have to go to the town and say, hey, we screwed up, and you, we need more money, and everything costs a lot. Right? Yeah, I guess I'm right trying to understand. Yeah, I mean, so we're, so we're talking about something doomsday happened. here. <laughs> the sky falls in, Chicken Little runs into the shelter. Everything goes bad. I don't think that has it ever happened before. I don't anticipate that happening again. But could happen tomorrow. Okay. Well, okay, anything can happen. Anything can happen. My bride could fall in, and all the cows could die. That's but Mike, if you want to go first. Yes. So it sounds like to me, just listening again, I'm down too. It sounds like everyone is in agreement with each other. We're not going to let, as the towns, we're not going to let the you know doomsday happen. And it sounds like. 
Seth's ideas are just from an accounting point of view so that everyone can see what it it looks like it's more easily on paper. And then I think that I think that we are all in agreement just using different words. And if we can make it till the next meeting, then we can talk about the budget at the budget meeting, if that makes sense. Yes. No, and, I, and I agree. And I'm just, it's not about the expense in a sense that we can cover it or we're going to run out of money. It's more about the capital budget, budget and the funding revenue. Right, right now, yeah. it's 100% funded by what the ambulance earns. The ambulance, what it earns, is regulated by Medicare and Medicaid. And so it doesn't matter if my cost is too grand to go out and provide a service to you. At the end, I get 750 from Medicare and Medicaid, and that's what I get. And so. You know, we're limited by the money that comes in based on Medicare and Medicaid. But unfortunately, the price of fire trucks, the price of ambulances, and the price of maintaining things in this building are skyrocketing through the roof. And so our little pot of money won't cover half the expenses we're going to be incurring over the next probably five and 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is to both towns, to think about and plan for that potential shortcoming. It's not today, it's not tomorrow. But like you said, we wanted to get 15 grand put into the budget to cover an, exp an annual expense that should not come out of ambulance revenue. But it does. Don't ask me who decided that. I think it's wrong. Well, you said keep it there. And if need be, we can help fund the capital. And so well, I'm that's just, what happened you know, with the fire truck that you just yeah. bought. The yeah. town gave, town of Chalice gave you a significant amount of money, and so did East Montpelier. That's and how we handled a significant capital expense. And I think those are going to become more, more often, not a rarity. Okay. Just, I'm just for heads up. That's fine. Yeah. This yeah. is an important discussion. It's not on the agenda for tonight, and we have a full select board yeah. meeting ahead of us. I would ask that we try to wrap things up here. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys, good. Yeah. Okay. So the yes. Are you going to make any motions relative to this? We should not, make a motion. Not tonight. Well, well, you've got to change the language. Yeah, the yeah they're going to write something by the yeah. yeah. We're not going to make any. You've got to change the language. Yeah. we got to change once, the language. Once you get it cleaned up. And all these parties need to see the change yeah. language. Yeah, right. so you got it. Yeah. yeah, once we get it cleaned up and everyone approves it, then we'll then make a motion to, a, to accept it. Thank you. Sound good? But thanks for asking. We might have forgotten something vital. <laughs> thanks for hosting. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. No, hope, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we, we invite you to stay. We invite you to stay around. No, the reason that we put this at six thirty and got right to it is we wanted. Yeah. Oh, we appreciate it. You got other things to do. Finally, we want to get this done. So, thank you for coming. Okay. Yeah. We encourage them to stick around. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, Corey, this is all, all the fun stuff, man. Mm -hmm. hey, really good work. Intimately <laughs> familiar with all that fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, I okay. bet you are. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a nice rest of the evening. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of the evening. Yeah, thank you. We'll get yeah. to it. One way or another. One way or the other. Yeah. Let's try to it. All right. It's 7.30. Look an hour. <laughs> Looks like there's a lot of public there. What's that? Looks like public. there's a lot of public. Oh. Okay. Let's see if I can catch everybody. So I'd like to call me. I already called the meeting order, so we're just going to the next item because this was our meeting. Um, so additions to the agenda. Do we have any? Um, yeah. oh, that's not There's some people who are interested in talking about Goddard College. Oh, I don't know. I, yes. I yeah. know about that. But are you are you saying that? Because I'm, I'm saying that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I thought that was on the additions to the agenda, second page. Um, are you looking at the the extended yeah. agenda? Yeah. 
So right. we, we need to address those here and just say these are being added to the agenda. Okay. Yep. All right. Oh, that's on the select board now? Yeah. Right here, this one. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Got it right here. Yep. Okay, so the addition about Goddard sale in addition to the company Goddard property cost report. Okay, so I'll put that down in here, here somewhere. Addition. So this is Renee Carpenter. I'm a member of the public. I'm on Zoom. Okay. And it was my understanding that the discussion about Goddard College was going to come up at the beginning of the meeting under, what's it called, public comment? Uh, I don't know. Am I, am I mistaken about that? Well, it depends how long it takes. Public comment is not usually, um, you know, hours and hours, but it's usually five to, five to ten minutes. Is that going to be that quick? I mean, public, you don't do business under public comment. You just right. hear, hear what yeah. people have to say. Yeah. Or zero. So. We're going to do it. But it's at the front of the meeting. The additions are. You, right. You see. Okay. So it's not, it's not going to be at the end of the meeting, Renee. No, but it, so I, additions I, I, to the it, agenda, is, agenda, that's where be. we at, decide that's to add be. them. Right. But it's then not, we can take them up at any time. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. I'll make a motion that we accept the additions to the meeting. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Okay. So we're going to keep going. The review of minutes. And we'll put the additions in somewhere. Well, we can, when we get that, we can we can move them as we, we feel. Can, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So hey, we, hang on. Well, we should get through some of this stuff. Absolutely. The, yeah. the, the procedural right. stuff, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the minutes, June 3rd, 2024. Let's review those. I, I wasn't there at the meeting, but I did notice and the motion to for personnel matters to go into executive session uh -huh. that uh, the usual language statutory language needs to be there about for personnel matters oh you can get that from previous. okay does, it does have to be oh. in there i believe so okay yeah so you, you, you can just snag that some yeah exactly yeah okay so some previous minutes we'll have that for you Zoe. i think that's fine to me Look fine to me. Yep. Good job. Motion to accept the minutes. Second. As amended. As amended. As amended. As amended. All those, uh, any further discussion? All those, in further, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, okay. Town Garage, is that David Armstrong? Is he zooming in? Do we want to say something about when we're doing the Goddard discussion? If we have I people here that. who are for that? I, I here would, for that? You can do it anytime. Okay. I, I would suggest that we, right. we talk about the Goddard and, and then Coburn Pond after that since we've got yeah. But we just got to make sure that anybody that was coming in, we don't want them to have to wait in. Right. Is there any else? Wait. But I don't think, I, that's what I'm wondering about. God, yeah. Goddard? That's what I'm wondering about the uh, VIS. And, and the people, is there anyone online? To I can't really question? see that. I think Renee was here for that. For I, uh, Colburn Pond. Well, wait, case. did we vote to put a Colburn oh, Pond on the agenda? I didn't think no, we did. No, I don't see it. Colburn no, Pond is This is a, um, this is a guy from VIS, correct? Yes. So we should do that. Sure. He's right there. Okay. Okay. So, um. So then are we doing Goddard after that? We can do it after that. Yeah, okay. Sure. I think maybe Colburn Pond. No, that we are doing Colburn Pond. No, okay. Colburn Pond is not on. Okay, never mind. It was an email that I, I got. Yeah. Okay. That was it. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay, so. Okay, so are you David Armstrong? No, I'm Mark Blanchard. Oh, Mark Blanchard, okay. And uh, I'm just going to give you a quick update, overview of what's happening in the town garage. Okay. Uh, there's been a few other things, and then I want to um, ask your thoughts on moving um, uh, towards uh, investigation into a grant. So basically, uh, we've kind of moved a little bit slower than what I was uh, hoping to. Um, Weeman Lamphere does have a uh, drawing that is being estimated. And we should have the estimate in our hands tomorrow or Wednesday. Andy Shapiro has stayed in excellent step with uh, reviewing 
the um, the building for energy use, and um, we hope to have a uh, usable estimate by the end of the week. Um, in the meantime, uh, I did want to uh, ask you about Lincoln Frasca from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. He said there is grant funding uh, for stormwater improvements to your site because your municipal project qualifies for the grant. So uh, he said it may or may not qualify. So I was thinking I would look into it uh, at a high level. If it doesn't look like something you guys want to follow up on, I don't have to. I don't know what your um, relationship is with the regional planning. And I have to add that he sent the email to Gina Jenkins, not Jennifer Devine. So I had just forwarded it this morning to you, Seth, and um, Jennifer, because he didn't have the right people on the email. Okay, so I just got a quick question about that. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I hear you great. Okay, so what is the stormwater concern on that site? Cause is, uh, does it qualify? Well, you'll have to have it. You'll have to have a stormwater permit. Oh, we do? Because I thought that um, yeah. there's a trigger of so many square feet of imp impermeable surface. Yeah, you're over 5,000 square feet of impermeable surface with just the building, so. Okay. With so just we, the building, so. So I would say that it's good to look into a grant because it's going to be significant expense entailed on the stormwater whatever we got yeah. and i haven't investigated the details without your kind of go ahead because i didn't know if you you know where you were at with it so uh it does kind of make sense to investigate it at a high level and i'm assuming that a grant level only is attachable to stormwater improvements to the project it's yeah. not going to be able to help the whole project but I didn't know we were triggering triggering that. So five thousand square feet is not very much. That's only fifty by a hundred. So just the building itself is bigger than that. Yes, sir. It's the surface, right? Because we're not paving it. Yeah, so that's impermeable surface. It's the roof. The roof. That, that's yeah, it's going to trigger. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you got my permission to look into a grant. If you guys have any other questions about the building, I can update you as well as I can. We only had one design meeting with um, the uh, public works director, and that was basically we kind of refined the options, some of the finer details to option number two. Okay, so when are we having a meeting to review that design? Because I, I haven't seen it. So I don't know, I, there hasn't been many meetings. Haven't been any meetings. So. No, they uh, they are supposed to have a rendering uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, actually. Uh, tomorrow between 12 and 2, we're supposed to be meeting again, and they are supposed to have a rendering. Uh, again, this is a little opportunity for me to kind of understand the schedule. When would you like to see something that is um, uh, capable of being brought out to the voters? And... What would be your timeline on a vote? Would you see that happen in, in September, the primaries or presidential election or even next year in March? Well, let's look at the design first. So can you bring that to a regular select board meeting? Yes. You meet in two weeks? Uh, you don't meet the 24th, right? July 1st. Yeah. July 1st. Yeah. Can you bring it to that meeting? Because that we'll all be together and what the heck? What's that? You guys meet on the 24th or July 1st? July 1st. July 1st. Every two weeks, right? Yep. 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 Uh, first and third Mondays, generally. Yep. But we shifted around, okay. so keep an eye on our calendar. Yeah, so I think that would so be the... Uh, I'll put it down for the uh, the first, and uh, we'll see if um, Weeman Lamphere can have that completely ready. We'll have an yep. estimate by then, too, and you'll be able to okay. answer some questions. Yeah, and then we can all look it over and we can decide on a timeline. Sound yeah. good? Okay. I, I, I have a question. Yeah. Who's our roof? Yeah. Uh, who, who's our public works commissioner that you met with? Oh, I'm going to call him Rowdy, but it's not is Rowdy. It, it's uh, Guthrie. Guthrie. 
Yeah, okay. So he's a, he's a road foreman. Let's not call him public works commissioner so it doesn't go to his head and he doesn't ask for a raise. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, I knew his title wasn't right, but I didn't remember his nickname. Okay. So he so he's looked at the design, I assume? Yes, he's uh yeah, he's um zeroed in on option number two, which is uh you know, there was two options in the beginning and the okay. rest of the building is kind of uh in Weeman Lamphere's hands, the wall sections and the type of roof and sprinkler okay. systems and that and that. But I think you're I think it is a good idea to discuss it in person. We'll have a rendering and a uh, estimate yeah. on the cost and that'll help a lot. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Worst we'll have scenario there's a meeting on the fifteenth if, if they're not available. Okay. You know, vacation since because it's July fourth week. Right, yeah, it is. Right. We have another meeting on the fifteenth just in case for some reason the first doesn't work. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm not available okay. at first, by the way. Oh, well. But I don't need to be here for that discussion, but right. just in terms of getting a quorum. Okay. So Sounds good. So look into, right. the, look into the grant, and we'll aim for the first. I won't take any more of your time. Okay, thank you. Thank so you, Mark. Wait, 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 wait. Are you still there? Oh, okay. Uh, we, we have something. Thank you. We have something about a boundary line adjustment survey on, on this, uh, a $6,500 question. That's a separate thing. I'm not aware of it. Oh, okay. That's 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 to do with chase the survey. Chase. That's chase and chase. So we don't we don't need to discuss it with Mark. No. Okay. I, okay. We just got to look at the map. Yeah. Do we okay. have a map. Hopefully. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's, that's they, the biggest. Thing. Thank, thank you, Mark. I guess we don't need. Thank to you, do Mark. That. Yeah. Have a great night. You okay. Do. So yeah, the boundary line. We just got to look at the map on that. I think it's close, but I don't even know we need to do it. Yeah. I mean, if it's going to be $6,500 or more, I guess I'll back up and ask the question. From the beginning, it seemed right to adjust the boundaries so that the town garage was on one parcel and not sprawling over a couple of parcels, even though they're both owned yeah, by the yeah, towns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it's going to cost so much, do we want? Do we care? But I don't think the town garage, that the one they're going to build, is going to be uh, <coughs> It's closer to the road, so it's definitely not. It's, it's falling over. It's on its own parcel already. I believe so, but we okay. have, we don't, do we have a map in our thing here? No. I don't believe we do. Well, no. What, what about the question of what? Jennifer said no. So the other question we had was whether we're going to have to move the access over further than it is. I haven't today. seen a map. So I don't well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think we need to see yeah. a map before we, we can actually. Right. So what about, about the. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So what about the question of whether it's important to get a boundary line adjustment if the building is going over a boundary, but the town owns both parcels? I have to see it, Matt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't remember where the line was. The line was, I think it's inside the footprint of the town garage, but not the actual building. Uh -huh. I think it's like follows the bank or, right. you know what I mean? It's like we are taking a little bigger footprint mm -hmm. and the boundary line is over on the footprint. So, yeah. you know, but yeah. we really should look at a map and then we know exactly what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Okay. Instead of like, we don't. <laughs> All right, so the garden thing, we might as well do that and get that out of the way because we don't have anybody else waiting for us. Um, so what are we doing here? Sue, are you presenting? Oh, yeah. Okay, I got to, oh, this is Kyle. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna find another college. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, bad timing. <laughs> um, I'm Sue Chickering. I think I know most everybody. You know me. Um, and uh, actually, my family moved here um, to East Montpelier in '64 because my dad got a job working at Goddard. Um, so that's kind of what brought us here. So it's a little bit near and dear to my heart. But um, more importantly, is um, it sounds like it's been sold or is, is in the process of being sold illegally to a, another party. And um, it's come to my attention, Andy Christensen explained to me what was going on and what we're asking of you is what the same thing that was asked of the Plainfield Select Board to write a letter to the Attorney General um, to just say, can she look into, she or he look into what's actually happening with this? Because it looks like there's quite a number of bylaws and um, legal implications of what happened with this potential sale, that it's not 
not following Goddard's Board of Trustees bylaws. Um, I have a rough draft of a letter that you might want to consider using, just because it outlines those particular particularities of the bylaws and the federal tax law for this nonprofit organization. Um, and essentially, this one paragraph says, according to the bylaws, the executive committee shall not have the power to elect, appoint, or remove any office or trustee to sell, lease, pledge, or otherwise dispose of all or substantially all of the assets of the college. And so it's not allowable through the bylaws. So um, that's why I'm here. That's why maybe Renee is here. That's why um, Andy's here, to just see if you're willing to, to draft a letter to the attorney general to just look into this before it happens and it, it all falls apart. There's some great resources like WGDR there. There's just there's a lot of great resources as the, on the campus there. Yeah. Seth? Yeah. So uh, I noted that uh, you guys had discussed this last last time you met, and I looked at the what was presented as a letter from the Callis Select Board and thought about tonight, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the the one from the Callis Select you Board. Mean you mean Plainfield? Thank you. Yeah, not the one from the, the Plainfield only Select Plainfield Board. Plainfield and East Montpelier. Has um, a whole bunch of assertions about legal issues, some of which you've touched upon, Sue, which I don't feel comfortable <laughs> signing off. So, so could could I finish, please? Uh, so, what I've done is I've drafted a letter, uh, and Jennifer, did I, did I get that to you in time to? Yep, everybody has that. Uh, okay, have okay, thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. So, uh, I put together. Uh, what's intended to be a draft cover letter for us to set. So if you guys want to put together a letter with your legal concerns, then we could uh, attach this cover letter, which basically says to the Attorney General, Goddard College is important, yeah. and uh, here we have some residents who are concerned about it. They have some issues. Would you please um, carefully consider the attached letter and provide a written response that addresses each of the legal concerns and questions posed by our residents? I could just give this to you guys to peruse and see if this meets with, because it isn't nearly as lengthy as the Plainfield one, for sure. Uh -huh. And East Montpelier doesn't have as big of a vested interest. It's not as many, much acreage that East Montpelier has. 14. But it is also a way to help preserve, mm -hmm. for the time being, this resource. Right. So I'm happy to just give you this, and you can look it over and see if you think you want to change it. It's just a suggestion. Yeah, suggested sure. Language. OK. But so, isn't the news of all these letters to block the sale? I mean, that's what you're doing. It's you're not necessarily to block the, the college being sold, but it's to make it make sure it's sold in a legal <coughs> manner. And they were supposed to meet with the attorney general. Like whenever a nonprofit is going to go out of business, Dissolve. they're supposed yeah they're supposed to have a 20 days before dissolution, and that never happened. So this board but we don't know that happened. the board we, it didn't, sure didn't happen because we've been in touch with the attorney general. She got no information from them. This board of trustees is out of state and not local people anymore. My dad used to be on the board. He's gone. Right. Died. Um, so there used to be more local people on the board, and there isn't now. So they're out of staters making decisions for us, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. And they're not following their own rules. So that's why I'm concerned. And that is also why I'm here. This is Renee on Zoom. And um, I, I don't know if it's worth how long the letter is, Sue, if that's something you wanted to read out loud. Or um, I, if I heard Carl's idea correctly, um, it sounds like a great idea to me. And am, did I interpret correctly that you're less interested in the details of what the group might have in the letter that the town would just simply attach it to your letter saying they're concerned citizens. I mean, I could back up and tell you why I'm here. Um, I have answer your question, Renee. Um, I, I would want to take a look at the letter from uh, from the citizens of the residents and and uh, just make sure that uh, yeah it passes a straight face test for us. It's basically uh, three paragraphs. I don't need to read it aloud. I, think. Uh, I mean, I, but um, but yeah, this is this is designed to be a cover letter for a broad range of possible letters from from the residents. Yeah. 
But what you're saying. So if, OK, go ahead, Renee. I was just going to say, if, if I could add a little bit of detail, um, or maybe it just is a finer point, in addition to being a nonprofit, Goddard obviously is an educational institution. And there have been a, several public meetings, one of which I went to, um, and a um, professor from Middlebury College who had very carefully studied the dissolution of Marlboro College gave very detailed information. So there are two groups that um, have mission statements that are aligned with Goddard's philosophical mission. One of the things that Sue referred to is that um, Goddard had a very clear philosophy. It was defined in their mission statement. So in addition to 501c3 rules and uh, specific federal regulations around the dissolution of educational institutions, um, there also is a, a mission statement for Goddard, which is very specific to Goddard. And one of the things that was so impressive to me at the public meeting was a discussion about how much impact Goddard College has had, not only on the town of Plainfield and East Montpelier and central Vermont, but they've spawned a lot of um, uh, changes. And like they were the first uh, place in Vermont to, to do innovative uh, building design back in the 70s and installing uh, solar panels. And they had a wind generator over at Cape Farm and they hosted the Institute for Social Ecology. Now they have the um, School of Integrated Herbalism, not to mention WGDR and its 50 some year history. So it behooves the town of East Montpelier not only having to do with how much land is in East Montpelier, but also understanding the cultural impact and economic impact that Goddard has had. And that is why people feel that it's so important that the town of East Montpelier make a statement and acknowledge the um, serious violations of what the current board of trustees appears to be in violation of the law. So all we're asking is for the attorney general to investigate. I mean, certainly following the law is important, right? So I've drafted this cover letter. Is the letter just from you? Because I, I see well, you it's, signed it's, it. It's an idea. I mean, it, it's... it's, it's a direct, uh, so I was going to make a motion to authorize the chair to sign this letter on in behalf of the select board and to attach the letter that uh, Sue Chickering has brought when she uh, you know, brings us a formatted one with some signatures it's from townspeople. Signature. Yeah. I just wrote it. Okay, with your I mean, signature. No, without, I mean, it would be the select board signature. No, no, no. Oh. No. no. Oh. no. So okay. what, what, what I'm proposing okay. is that we write the letter that I gave you saying, okay. hey, here's this other letter that some people oh, in okay. town have written. I got and you. please take a look at it and uh, give them the answers they're looking for. Yeah, and your cover letter says specifically what we're asking, is that you're just looking into the legality of it. Right, exactly. Yes. So, really exactly. That's, very, that's totally great. Yeah, yeah Tom. So I'll say the same thing that I said at our last meeting. I think that the impact from a group of citizens is going to be far better than this board as a whole. And you know, um, having those letters attached with a cover letter like this to me makes more sense. Yeah, there's a lot more muscle yeah, behind it. it. That's fine. I just didn't know how. It, yeah, but I didn't know how. It what worked. Kyle is saying is he wants myself to sign the letter as from the select board. Yes. And I'm not comfortable with it. The cover letter. Yeah, the cover letter. I don't, I don't want it's, anything to do with it. It's just saying that um, 
hey, this is something to take a look at. Please do. I understand the thought. It, it and has, I do appreciate and it. And it has no assertions about illegality. Right, because I am anything. definitely not going to assert that. I agree. Yeah. I, I don't want to either. Right. Yeah. I think Carl's letter avoids that. Yeah. I know he's, what he's doing. Okay. Exactly. And that's definitely a compromise mm -hmm. in that you're still looking for town support of the effort. You still have because you want us to sign this yes. cover letter mm -hmm. supporting the citizens yes. of East Yes. Their right to get, to get an answer. Yeah. But we're, not, they, we're not taking a position. Yeah. We just want the just, we want the attorney general to look into these couple of allegations or is, is you are, but you are taking a position by sending a letter. Mm, yes, you are. Nope. I don't think so because I, I think either. we're asking so, so, someone that's more impartial that has the legal understanding that we don't to look at it with different if eyes. If the attorney general comes back and says, yes, this is all uh, this is all kosher, this is all legal, then uh, we'll say I'm great. not taking a stand, right. I'm not taking a side one way or the other. I want to know, I, I want it to be on the radar, I want the attorney general to come back to me, they're the experts, and tell me whether this is all proper. That's all. Uh -huh. Right. I may not agree with their decision. They may say, yes, it is proper, and, this and is I may why, not agree right? with that decision, you mm -hmm. might not agree with that decision, but I want to hear the 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 final say before the Supreme Court of mm -hmm. Vermont. That's, that's, I'm not taking a position. Mm -hmm. And another point, do, does the chair have to sign it? Can it just... Yeah, I mean, if the, say, okay, so if it comes to a motion, mm -hmm. which I think it will, and it's 3-2, which it could be, I am not signing it. Okay. I, I just will not sign it. But okay. if okay. you guys want to sign it, that's fine. Well, why okay. do you have to sign we it? We can do that. So, yeah. so I mean, that's why, what I'm saying is I'm mad at yeah, that's Why fine. does there have to be a signature on it at all? Right. Um, well, it comes from the East Montpelier Select Board, so... If it comes from the East Montpelier... On, on, on the behalf of the East Montpelier Select Board. Right. But we could, have, we could have four names on it right. of Select Board members. Or you can have three. Or you can have three. <laughs> yeah. You can have three. Yep. Yeah. I think I mean, that I, I can see the position. I can see the perspective that it would be taking a stand without Carl's cover letter. But I think that Carl's cover cover letter um, so it puts the emphasis on our what our ask is to listen to the citizens that aren't haven't been getting an answer. Because my understanding is that they have been not getting an answer. Please no. send a letter. They have not gotten a response from the attorney general as just the citizens, and I think that's why. No, they had the select board voted. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm talking about the, I'm like, talking about the matter, citizens of East Montpelier. The city, like oh. um, Tom had suggested that citizens alone could go to the attorney general and ask for answers. Right. This, th that tried and they did yeah. not get an answer. So I think that what Carl's letter is saying is we're not taking a stand on the position of the sale itself. What we're taking a position yeah. on is listening to the citizens of East Montpelier, yeah. which is not even really involved in the sale of Goddard itself. I understand where you're coming from, but I don't agree. I just don't. Okay. Well, we, I, we talked about that last week. Yeah, yeah we, can, I, we can do it without your name on it. Yeah. yeah I, that's fine. I am not okay. comfortable with signing so, so I, I want to just say by, uh, about conflict of interest. Um, I yeah. have I have no conflict of interest. I believe that um, would lead me to recuse myself from it. But I just want to lay it out there that I used to work at Goddard. I used to be uh, co-chair of the staff union. Uh, that's all in the past. I do have a radio show at WGDR. There, uh, I receive no remuneration for that. And uh, the director of the station has assured us that the five-year lease that uh, the station has signed is good. No matter who buys it, so I think I don't need to recuse myself. But I want to put that out there in case anybody disagrees. Right. I'll, and I'll recuse mm -hmm. myself because I listen to the station. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll second Carl's motion. Okay. So right. well, wait. Um, right. I, w I want to change the Do motion, the motion. Yeah. since Seth yeah. has indicated yeah. he doesn't want to sign it. No. So I, I would then move to um, to send to the attorney general the cover letter. Uh, on behalf of the East Montpelier Select Board uh, for how many letters are, are Andy are you going to write a different letter or how's it going to work so are you going to sign on to Sue's yeah okay um, to the cover letter for the uh, letter from East Montpelier residents to the Attorney General so I do have a question is there yeah. going to be more than just your two signatures on there I would hope that you would get a lot of signatures on there because that's going to create that's what I'm saying. If there is a pub, if they can yeah. see there's a public outcry, 
think that what she said was, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, was that it was way more more clout coming from a select board than any number of us okay. citizens. Because there was already a phone call made to her from citizens, and then she said, no, I need to hear from the towns. Mm -hmm. But didn't Plainfield they, send a letter? Or? Plainfield Select Board did send a letter, yeah. but they That's haven't right. heard back anything yet. Okay. Their letter was oh, We live there. in East Montpelier, and people in East Montpelier, I mean, I'm sure it's more than the three of us who live in East Montpelier. In fact, I'm sure of it. It's an organizational issue about, and it's a time sensitive issue. If, if, um, if on, on an aside, I'm, I'm, obviously you understand my position from, from the last meeting. Um, I would imagine if you would get 10 or 15 residents to call the attorney general's office, in addition to what we're doing here, that would carry that much more weight. That just a help. suggestion. Yeah, for sure. When you call your congressman, that's, that's my point. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea too. It's just whatever. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. Timing uh, is of the essence. Yeah. It is because it's yeah. If this okay. goes through, then it won't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. But a group yeah. of citizens. I mean, I can name at least six more people that I know uh, who live in East Montpelier who I thought were going to be at the meeting. I, maybe they were there earlier and couldn't wait. Um, there was nobody else here. But maybe, uh, we're asking the town to represent our interests just to explore that the sale is legal. We're not trying to stop the sale yeah. of Goddard itself. We just want it to be a legal process. Yeah. And uh, from everything I've heard from people who have spoken with Malone Properties, from people who have approached the attorney general themselves, and people who have approached the board of trustees, um, it seems very evident that um, however it's done, having the select board of East Montpelier represent citizen interests to the attorney general will have what we need to move it forward, similar to what Plainfield's doing. So I have a question about the logistics. Uh, I got this uh, draft to Jen right before the meeting, so I'm glad you had time to print it out and put it in the packet, but uh, it's not formatted uh, for us to sign tonight. So maybe it would make sense to off, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be coming through here till Thursday. Maybe it would make sense to authorize the vice chair to sign it. Sure. Okay. So do you so, want to read the motion? So the motion then would be the same motion as uh -huh. before, except we authorize the vice chair okay. to, to sign it. So the thing is that what we're what you're doing, it, I mean, whatever, but you're trying to block the sale. That's I, no, the legality no. thing. If but, you didn't but, care, if you didn't care about not the sale, we're not you talking, we can talk about this all night, Seth. Yeah, we can. <laughs> but we're not. That's not what I'm voting on. That's not what I'm, I'm voting, voting on. on just, I want, if if you were in favor of the sale. You could care less whether it's legal or not. That's not true. No. Actually. Oh, okay. So we're I, I, we're, I, I, so I, I, we're worried about legality of every sale that happens of nonprofits in the area. Well, if, yeah. if really, the nonprofit yeah. has if it's not done been, properly. If it's oh, has, so let's look into not, some other sales of nonprofits that are around the area. I don't that's think that's our purview. None of the other Come nonprofits on. have as great a value of land that hasn't been paying taxes to us. Twelve acres. Thirteen acres. It's been twelve thousand dollars a year. That's the value of the land, not the taxes. Ninety nine point. No, 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 that's no, the taxes. Tax, no, the value of the land is over no, a million. We have we have buildings. Ninety nine yeah. point ninety nine point nine 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 of all nonprofits, and I have been on a board or two. Okay. Didn't have or didn't have any property. They just dissolved. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this has property that we will now, if a developer buys it, that we will get taxes on. That's not what I'm voting on. I'm okay. voting on, I want to I want to make sure this is legal. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Yep. And it's not only about the land. It's about the organization, which is 70-odd uh, years old, that yeah. has been very important, that has promoted a form. I mean, I could That's I not what I'm doing voting. in education for 25 years. I could tell you about it. It's based on democratic principles about how chill, how people learn. We understand right now. I'm not this, voting on the on. I am voting on representing right. my citizens. I want the attorney general to make a ruling on whether this is whether this is legal or not. Uh, I, Thank I, you. Could we Could vote, vote now? Yes. Yeah, let's vote now. We have a lot of this stuff. Okay. Um, so any any further discussion on the motion? We have a motion, and we have second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. 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 Oh. I don't like the way this part of it's worded. <laughs> it's not what you said before. I, I, okay. I understand. Okay. Okay. So okay. Let's move on to our. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thanks for coming Sue, in. Sue, when, when will you bring in a letter to Jen to um, attach. attach to this? Can that suffice? Um, we'd, we'd like something, you know, nicely formatted and with signatures on it. Well, just, I can just be my signature on that letter because I'm not going to be having the time, the letter that I gave you. Yeah. That's oh, right. Still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a letter. But I can just put my signature above my name and have that account. Um, do you want to sign this too? Because it's written the way you need it to be. It, I mean, it spells it out. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I mean, if you got okay. Do you want to get other signatures, Sue? No, I don't. I, no. I really okay. don't want to yeah. okay. get a divorce. Uh, okay. I just want to, um, but I'm happy to then sign it. Then what you should do is think, uh, whatever. Uh, yeah. You'll take it from yeah. there. Please, please, just sign please it sign it and, and have it yeah. right back. Yeah. Give it, give it, give to, it to Jen, give it to Jen. Give it to Jennifer. Okay. And then, Zoe, you'll, you'll make time to go by and sign it. Yeah. Thank it, you. For some reason, you can. I can go. Thank you. Okay. Nice chair. Thank you. Okay, just sort it out. Sounds like it. Time for okay. Thank you. The liquor licenses. Yeah, liquor licenses. So we have a liquor license. It's from Plainfield Hardware, but actually they are now Winooski Valley Cooperative Market. Any objections? Is this is this just that? continuing the same yeah. selection that they have? I yeah. believe so. Yep. Okay. I have a conflict of interest. I sometimes buy beer there. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't think we need a motion. We just need to. Uh, we need a motion, then? I think, I think we, so. we have authorized, authorized the chair yeah. yeah. to okay. sign the yeah, yeah. application. Did you move? Yes. Okay. Okay. I second. All those, are there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, Wood Valley Pizza LLC. That is there an event. That's what that's an event, oh. yeah. Is that the one doing that? Foster Road, is that right? Oh, that's for the wedding next week. Yeah. yeah. Make a motion to authorize the chair to sign. No, we are no. authorizing uh, the, the town and town, okay, yeah. town, town, town clerk. Yeah, town clerk. clerk. Town oh. clerk to process the license. 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 Yeah. Yes. You made the motion. I did. Did I? You made the motion. Okay. I made the motion. I'll second. Second. Okay. <laughs> oh. Any okay. further objections or any further discussion? No, All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carl Ward Word Smith did properly. Yeah. Wait, Scott, did you make that motion? I made it. And Carl second. Okay. Um. Next item is, is the appointments. Yes. And we want to change the road commission. Were there any other appointments? Um, so there is in your packet for signature for uh, the reappointment of the town clerk, town treasurer, oh, right, right, assistant right town clerk, assistant gotcha. town treasurer. So all the same folks. Yeah. And then the positions that are open road commissioner too so yeah i think that was going to be me and then yeah. we had an opening for central vermont solid waste district representative oh, right, john Gillett's gone planning commission member um yeah. they're re currently recruiting for that and then the green up day coordinator was the last one christine schultz feeling is interested and she's currently speaking with chris uh, to learn about it so okay. No, no pressure on her having her named in the public meeting. So, um, so I don't have a list. I just have these four. Right. The Plus, town clerk. And what were the other ones? It's road commissioner. It's going to remain the same the rest of the appointment list. But the road commissioner, how, road commissioner, how do we get you appointed as road commissioner? We appoint her. Right, but is there something for us to sign? Just a motion, I think. I, yeah, we can just do it by motion. We should be able to just okay. do it by motion. Yeah, yeah. I just okay. wonder if there's so, all the others are fine or just. So yeah, all the others are fine, or they're not coming due. I'm, so. so do we do we need a motion about the town clerk and town treasurer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay, so yeah. I move there's to authorize 
the chair to sign the certificate of appointment for the town clerk, the town treasurer, the assistant town clerk, and the assistant town treasurer. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just copy and paste from the yeah, agenda. Give, give, that, give that notice. Here, it's got it right on the top. Yeah, just let me have a fax. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. And then we need to appoint Jennifer for. We'll, we'll do that as a separate motion. Yeah. yeah. And then what were the other ones? Thanks so much. The, they're empty. I mean, we can't appoint anybody to them yet. Okay, so that's good. Was there a second yeah. for that motion? I'll second it. Okay. There's a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So then, I, have it for this. then I move to appoint Jen Devine as Road Commissioner 2. Second. Any further discussion? Is she qualified? No, but it's okay. She will be after a while. <laughs> <laughs> question, question, question answered. All those I'm in favor, I'm satisfied with the answer. <laughs> thank God. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Jen. Guys, appear to have yes, thank you. Have You're a new Road Commissioner. <laughs> Just think Thank a year you. ago, do you think you'd be road commissioner? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, so that's a June appointments. Um, oh, right. The discussion regarding co-hosting public forum, and forum for school reconfiguration. I saw that email. Right. So uh, Chris McVay uh, from Washington Central Unified Union School District wants to come to our July 1st meeting to discuss it. And he's asking us to co-host the forum um, to get feedback from the select board on the reconfiguration plan. So closing a few schools and. Yeah. Yes. I, I have no problem with listening to him, having him come to the July 1st meeting to propose what he's thinking about, but I, I would not Did want to. Did you read the position. email? Yeah. Okay. Could, just, could, could you finish your sentence without Seth interrupting you, please? I didn't hear what you said. Um, I have no problem inviting him. We don't need a motion on this, inviting him to the July 1st meeting. Um, but I have, um, at this point, I don't want to take a position on whether I agree or disagree with his letter. I'm hosting a meeting. I'm, I, I'm not in a position right now of voting on um, hosting the meeting or co-hosting the meeting for the yeah you know, for okay, reconfiguration. Yeah, yeah. You're but, o you're okay with him coming to present? Yeah, something. there could be we could put him on the agenda. Yeah, for a certain amount of time. Not yeah, involved. and I won't be here, so yeah, he can talk to you guys as much as he wants. <laughs> no, no, he's gonna have a short time. <laughs> so I, I, I do have a that. I do have a request though. Yeah, I I couldn't make heads or tails out of this letter from him. Uh, he right. says that he's writing as a member of the school board he doesn't say he's writing on behalf of the school board and that was that was my concern yeah so i'm i'm interested is he freelancing yeah. has the school board asked him to do this i don't uh, know I, so I, jen okay. could you get get some clarification from him sure. yeah, I mean, it you. seemed like a long i mean this seemed to be almost outside our purview in some ways it is i, I totally well, agree I, That's right. I think that i mean the rate way i saw it was within our purview is that um if a school is going to be closed yeah. then the town can buy it for a dollar yeah. now nobody's proposing to close our school as far no. as i know so no. it's not really our purview but That's what it, I thought. it's purview of some select board so i don't know I guess I he could know. just come and tell us why he I, thinks I, I it's important him, to us, but, minutes, <laughs> right. And that's enough. Yeah. That's my point. That's mine, too. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. We we case, week, case, week, case. Uh, the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talk, I'd like to talk about God of College some more. You said, I'll do it after I To the wall. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that sounds good. So the Lister laptop has now come up again for discussion. It came so how many more. times is this? Huh? How many times is this? Yeah, a, a, a bunch. A lot of grand houses. So days. please refresh my memory on why we didn't buy one. I believe that we didn't find it necessary before is what my memory serves. Well, our last town administrator was vehemently against it. Why, why was that? Again? Why? I can't remember. Is it, you guys remember? My memory is that um, she didn't find that listers were right. want, needing to work on three different machines at the same time. And there was, it, there is, there is that, there, there is the access in the office. Right. Yeah. And there's only one lister that actually works on computers. Mm. Is that true? Pretty much. 
Okay. I lost it a little. Bit. Okay. And, and there is still access. In, and there is still access in the town. So they don't have office. a laptop. Is that the case? They don't have a laptop. They can take home a work on. I believe that's true. Right, so they can't work from home. Or yeah. They're out on site or off yeah. site at location. Yeah. They should at least have an iPad or something where they How much is it? Do it on site. So RB Tech gave an estimate 2500 for the laptop with the docking station, but it's you know, not an exact quote. Yeah, I mean, last time we talked about a computer purchase, Scott raised some questions, which I think were entirely legit. Well, he said, yeah, about how, how, how expensive RB Tech computers are. Why? And I'm gonna and I'm gonna vehemently. Well, I'll talk. I, th I, I think this, why, I think I was just gonna say, why are we like, buying it through RB Tech? I think the reason is the security, mm -hmm. because security is. They yeah. can install the security software yeah. pay them right. on that afterwards. Yeah. I, I won't take a position. So it, when when and if this comes up again, right? That makes RBC. sense. I mean, RB Tech. RB Tech. Yeah, what, how 20, much do you spend for a laptop? I don't know. It's so I, so, I, have a, yeah, yeah, so I have a real high tech one because of my job. Yeah. Um, and I, I spent less than 2000 directly from Dell. Anyway, and then you do have to buy the software. So, so 2500 is that nice. But, but we don't, but I don't care. But, yeah. but we don't know what, let's just buy a $2,500 computer. Maybe. A five hundred dollar iPad is enough. Yeah. I have no idea. That, that's, just, that's that's my point. Yeah. What are they going to use Wait. it for? Could we get a letter from them? And can I just that? ask a question? I don't know Do if this know? is relevant, but and this this is just me trying to make sure my memory is right. But were we not talking about the number of hours the listers were putting in last year, and we were talking about how they're they've gone over hours is yeah, that, yeah, we right? have, that yeah. was another issue so yeah. would not buying a laptop enable more hours of work I don't know I don't know maybe it'd make them more efficient I don't know okay maybe they could got it I see yeah 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 that's a good point they, then they wouldn't kind of have to come to the office is that the point of this whole thing uh, so it's to be able to work from home and then there's three people so they wanted three workstations oh so. but do well, they need three workstations mm -hmm. well I guess they think they do they think they do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. we don't. Know. So if they don't have, if they don't have, a, buying an extra laptop or two, they can't do their job. Well, then know. one person's out of a, yeah. a workstation. Right. That's their concern. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming they're all there together. Are they all there together? I never see. Uh, some days, Thursdays they are. Oh, they are. Okay. And so they've been a shortage of computer space at that time. Maybe we should right. see what specs they need exactly, and maybe like something cheaper, like an iPad, would suffice. And then, well, I'm thinking they're thinking they need to use it in the office, and then they have three computers. They only have two at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two desktops. At the two moment. desktops. And they use but, the, laptop. but they do have a laptop, right? No. No. They do not. They do not have a laptop at all. Right. No, that's mm. the issue. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that. We should probably approve it. To yeah. be honest with you. Well, I'd, I'd like to see the specs. Okay. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. I'd rather not have to. I said my piece at the at the last computer meeting. <clears throat> You'd rather. Um, I, I find you know, it hard I, to believe that they would need something as high tech as I have, for example. And I spent far less than twenty five hundred. So. Well, mm -hmm. I think the twenty five hundred doesn't that include. All the software, yeah. installation, yeah. Let's see, let's, and documentation. Let's see, and stuff. Yeah. We'd like to see the breakdown of exactly what. And why they need it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Warrants. We have warrants right here. I'll get some of that later. This is check for report. Right here. because I know you look through every piece of paper. <laughs> really? I do on the payroll, but not usually on this. Wow, today's 
really the seventeenth. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Any interest in going through the no. specifics here? I mean, if I get into a flow of doing the minutes during the meeting, they could have this laptop. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Did you hear what Zoe said? Yeah. If I do, what, if I if I do, what laptop is that? This is the town laptop because I don't oh. have a laptop. Oh, okay. But if I'm able to do all the minutes, yeah, during the meeting, uh -huh. I don't know. I'm just thinking. I wouldn't count well, on that. So the okay. Is what I believe is the municipal, municipal coordinator's laptop in ah. case she wanted to work from home, but uh, in the summer months uh, and now it's freed up. So, which one's freed up? This, this one. one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Whose laptop was that? Heather. Oh, Heather. Yeah. Okay, but she so, doesn't usually want to work from home. Right, but if they have to during the winter, and then Rosie has one too. Oh, okay. ZA has one, Michelle and myself. Oh, what a few. I'm buying one right now for her. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got the, I've got the prices listed. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> um, Oops, I don't want to take all your papers. Sorry. Sorry. Warning. Okay. We're working on the warrants. Town treasurer, monthly report. Right, so that should be in the packet. Yep. And uh, so basically, 65k budget surplus investments are in 16k. Is that for the month? Um, so that's the, the end of the year. Yeah, for the, can't be that's where the budget stands right now. Current year. Year today. For the current year. Year to date. Year to date. Delinquent tax is 151k, and then we're having our external audit August 19th and 20th. Those are the highlights. So the fiscal year ends July 1st? June 30th. Uh, yeah, June 30th. June 30th. So, so you, we, usually only, what we've done. We've only made, I know, we've only made $16,000. 65K is our current surplus, yeah, but we're not designed right to make now. money. We're designed to meet the budget. No, in, I'm talking about our investment. He's talking oh. about the investment income is 16000 Oh, I we've see. We've been investing, you know, a million dollars mm -hmm. a year is $50,000 in today's money, in today's interest. I, I know she's on top of that, but mm -hmm. could you just mention to Michelle that are we are we investing so as much as we can? And it seems a little, it seems with a month and a half to go, um, a little shy of what you know, I know we didn't just, we may not have started right away, but um, anyway, no question. So, so according to her, she's saying sixteen thousand just from the newer investments. Yeah, those are the ones that he's talking about. Yeah. When did she start? A while ago. Really? Yeah, yeah. probably going to be more. A million dollars is, we should be making, we should be earning about 50 grand a year. Easily. Well, that's maxed out. Yeah. On um, short term T bills yep. or CDs. Yeah. So if she's saying the cash balance is lower than last year's. Business. So she's going to say. She said, I'll revisit this and determine how much more we can save people by the main checking account. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just, I'm just not like it. Yeah. I know she, she, she knows it's a concern, but yeah. I'm not second guessing her by any means. So we do have some limited tax mm -hmm. payers. It's only going to get worse. So it looks like we're going to have a small surplus, but it doesn't look like it's going to be very much to worry about. Because sometimes what we've done is we've forward spent, and the only way to do that is allocate the money now at this meeting, actually, to say we're going to spend so much on sand out of this year's budget. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that much money to play with, so mm -hmm. we're just going to leave it. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Will we have a better idea in? No, you don't have. In a, uh, no, uh, we have two weeks right. left. Right. This is it. This is the last right, meeting. We're done. Right. We're done. Right. Well, we could say now, oh, let's spend $50,000. Yeah, that's, six, that's 16 but, grand. But it's welcome. not much money. Okay. But the six, yeah, you're talking something. No, I'm, I'm going back. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. Okay. All right. I follow so there's no, there's no decisions. Sometimes hard to follow, but I'm following. I have trouble following myself. I guess that. I see that. Anyway, um, so it looks like we don't have a lot of money to play with. It's my point. 
by July 1st, which is lack of, lack of, so, yeah. lack of surplus. Yeah, we're okay. Which means, that the, which means that the budget is yeah, extremely accurate. accurate. Exactly. Right. Yes. It was a great budget. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like the fire department that has you know skyrocketing expenses and can't stick to the budget. We've been able to maintain it. Right. That's what those were. <laughs> Just tell them. Yeah, as I as I was telling them, that truck that was delivered cost us four fifty five. We ordered it today, be over seven hundred. Same exact truck. Yeah. Well, we got out of it well, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's well, that's that's what I'm saying. I know. It's but uh, but that's yeah. Or like uh, cost of gear, like Albert was saying, it's about fifty five hundred dollars per man to outfit yeah. just basic gear. Yeah. Nothing fancy. Yeah. So we're all dealing with skyrocketing expenses. I'm but when you it. put emergency medicine in front of it or fire department, yeah, it costs it costs more. Right. <laughs> I'm glad you said that word the second time because the first time I thought you were talking about the cost of beer. Oh, oh, yeah. it's beer. <laughs> the cost of beer. <laughs> okay. So anything else you want to say about the money part of things, Jennifer? No. We look like we're okay. Mm -hmm. No red flags. No. Uh, well, I showed you the invoice this morning from the fire department, but that's for next year. Ambulance so, service. So, Michelle and I looked up the history. We have never paid it this early, ever. Never. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's in December. Sometimes it's in January. Which, therefore, we could... It comes out of next year's budget. They sent the, they sent the bill early. Mm -hmm. That was my only surprise. Sorry, so that, can. Exactly. So, I'm gonna, we need to talk to the treasurer and say, hmm, maybe we should hold on to this for six months. What's normal? Normal is all over the place. Never been paid July 1st. Never. No, never. You, usually it's like October. Well, I saw it December. I saw okay, How much money are you talking about? Um, 211000 Okay. Pocket change. No, it's that's yeah. $10,000 a but year. But it's never been paid July 1st. No, never. ever. No, it's not not, it, it's not that I'm aware of. It's not not I know it's not. I looked at the history of the payment. You're talking about eight or $900 a month for every month that we keep that in the bank or in interest. Yes. A month. Yes. Okay, just so you're aware. Yeah. Thank you. You're most more than welcome, Mr. Chair. So, <laughs> point well taken. That's why I said don't pay it. I told him, do not pay it now, because we've never paid it July 1st, ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, okay, so we're over here. We have talked about the financials. Um, yeah. Oh, the annual proposed pay rate increase review and approval. It's a proposed 4%. Okay. So last year, at the same time, we discussed the pay rate. Um, and looking at last year's, it was from 3 to 5%, um, depending on different roles. Um, and then this year, we're proposing just 4% across the board. The same for everybody. So the way this works is that we basically make these decisions in December and oh, put, oh the, put them into the budget. Yeah, I know. And then, and then we uh, <laughs> implement that now. So is that how these were calculated, Jen? Are these no, based she's on? She's saying th last year is three to five. No, so December, wh what did we do when That's we a ballpark put it into the budget? Right, so what I saw was like anywhere from 3.2 to 5.5 for different roles, uh -huh. but not performance-based because as my understanding was there was no performance appraisal. Mm -hmm. So just coming yeah. on to the scene now, mm -hmm. it seems mm -hmm. okay. logical to yeah. just say 4% across the board. I okay, don't know so what you normally do. Is this, do, is this so. something we want to do in executive session? It's a pay, pay issue for personnel. It's going to be public. It's going to be public it's, anyway. The, the decision is going to be public, but our discussion as to why we reach it can be private. Yeah, if you want to discuss it, I'm, yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I'd like I to don't. discuss it in an executive okay. session. We have another executive session coming up Do we? also. I don't know. Yeah, it says potential. Personnel. Personnel. Yeah. yeah. Do we have a personnel now? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I see it's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move that we go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter with all the VSA language. Yeah. Um, I'll second it. Okay. Okay. So stop recording. Um, the do we have a second on that? Yes, Judge. Uh, oh, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Uh, we're out of executive session at 840.
no action was taken. No, no action was taken. As oh, usual. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'd like to make a motion to um, give a, an across-the-board raise of 4% to our employees. I think you're approving the proposed 4% to the rating Yes. Can you speak words? up, kind sirs? Yes. Um, Could you speak I'm up, making, please? I'm, make, I'm making a motion to approve the proposed the proposed 4% pay raise pay rate increase. Across the board. Across the board. Yeah. Thank you. Second. Yeah. Not Any further thing. discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Town Administrative Report. Okay, um, there's a National Weather Service Heat Advisory. Yeah. Uh, that's posted on the homepage. Um, Keith Kubin from CVRPC. Somebody trying to dial in? Yeah. They're, uh, they're on the phone with the. It's not Somebody us. doing a service. Call. Oh, no, I thought it was on Zoom. No, it's not us. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Uh, I yeah. was asking if uh, the town wanted a property. It's the Coburn Pond property. Um, and also, he was requesting a LHMP, Local Hazard Mitigation Plan, kickoff meeting. Um, so there's a few documents in the packet regarding that. Yeah, what do we want to do about Coburn Pond? We, we missed an opportunity to buy it years ago. Should we buy it now? There was some argument that Renee was making that we didn't want to buy it. I can't remember what it was. What kind of cost would it take? Probably a dollar. For a dollar. Mm -hmm. What kind of liability? Or I was just going to say. Right, I was wondering about the liability, too, because there there's a lot of. There is a huge liability there. Huge. It's a local swimming hole. I know where it is. Oh, okay, good. But I know and what, they park out the, the road, and I can't get through there with my fire machinery all the time. It's what all the, parked in the road. What are the costs? And I'd like to get a parking area in there, move oh. those freaking rocks. Or we, we can buy it and close it down. <laughs> and nobody will park there. No <laughs> yeah, that, that would be popular. <laughs> we, we just it would drain it. <laughs> yeah, that would be real popular. <laughs> drain it would be good, right? Yeah. And then we can make a the flood area. And then make a flood area, flood, right? Right. Can you imagine how our meetings would be then? <laughs> how many locals would be here? We'd be popular. How many would be? Yeah. Lots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially doing it in July. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, I move we buy it and make a parking area there. It's not a road. Could, could, it's quarter to nine. Can we, so, so well, what? let's figure out next steps on this. We got this yeah. before us. If we, so, I want to bring up an issue, and that is I'm a little bit sick of people bringing issues at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. the day of our meeting. No and I think we need to have a cutoff, unless it's an emergency, none of this baloney of getting emails at well, she's getting the emails yeah. from me. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe. Well, you saw the front just, porch form? Oh, I saw that too. That like really, really ticked me off. I like what? <laughs> wow. I haven't even so read. You, I haven't even read. I was. Well, you want to put it on the agenda for next time? Yeah, for next time. Okay. What? Yes. Coburn Pond. Yeah. Oh boy. Wow. Okay, so two hours for that. Agenda. Another thing that Carl's not going to be at. Yeah. Two Great hours Carl. is fine. I wonder why you're smirking. <laughs> we make a motion to pick them off the board for doing this. 15 minutes and we'll cut off the discussion at 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Is. Yeah, that should go on the um, agenda. Okay. Um, just to be aware, the next topic is the open meeting law changes July 1st. So we're basically following everything um, except for the high, some of the hybrid meetings um, and uh, getting clear recordings for those, like the rec board might need uh, some help with to update or whatever. Yeah. Um, FEMA projects, they're in process. The Horn and the Moon project completed this last Friday. Yay. So that was a good accomplishment. That's nice. yeah. Um, we do have the FEMA project certification in your folder, set to sign. Okay. Um, and then we have a meeting with the FEMA rep Thursday to provide her with some data. There's also a document there of the data she's looking for to give you an idea. Um, then there's some grants uh, that I just wanted to raise the awareness a $90 million FEMA Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission sent an email about hazard mitigation 
and um, the annotated agenda lists out some of the ideas uh, for projects. If we're interested, I need to apply. Uh, it's due by August 16th for that one. Then we have the grants and so, aid. So wait, wait, let's stop. Just run past that. What do we want to do with that? Do we want to? Just, got the do, do we want to just say right now we want you to um, to apply for that? Do we want to take it up at the next meeting as an agenda item? What's the downside? There's no downside of applying. Oh, it's yeah, hours of our town administrator. What are we applying for? Yeah. yeah, maybe it needs an agenda item. Well, we'd have to identify what we want. Yeah, upsizing bridges and culverts is an ongoing project, right? I guess so. Is this a tremendous amount of work? The application seemed pretty simple. You just need to know what you're asking for, right. possibly the cost estimate and a project plan. Well, we have enough you know, projects, enough projects few marks. Why wouldn't we just go forward? Why wouldn't we do Well, I'm not sure which projects you're talking about. You're talking about something over so we're working on? Are already in process? Uh, not not the ones in process. Those no, are FEMA funded. Yeah, yeah. Do we, I, do we have a culvert inventory that's um, with I, replacement? I think Guthrie has a, a plan that he wanted to follow through on, from what he told me. Oh, yeah. So, I I mean, know, that, I, that was last year. I bet if I make, I might have gone into back burner with yeah, what right, happened I'll make last a motion summer, to so. authorize the. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. What I, are you suggesting, Scott? I'm suggesting that. Um, that the select board chair confer with the road foreman on what priorities we should apply for um, for this 30 well, actually, he comes into the office and talks to the other road uh, commissioner right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Yeah. About what projects that, that, you could have. That yeah. works fine, too. Uh, okay. Why don't you wait another couple of weeks? Yeah. Well, no. And then you can report back to us back in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. we need to know what the projects are. Right. Okay. Yeah. Get yeah. the ball, how about get the ball? My motion is get the ball rolling. Yep, no, it dies for lack of a second. <laughs> <laughs> As it should. Yep. Okay, yeah. um, the next uh, is the grants in aid. Um, there's 37K remaining that would have to be used this September, before this September. It could be outsourced project, but we do have that money um, for non compliant roads. So, do we have ideas on how to use it? Um, so I looked at the map, and it's all the purple areas that are non-compliant, and there's quite a few. Um, so it sounds like the process would be to have Ashley Andrews come out after we've identified the non-compliant purple areas in the app. Is this stormwater compliance, or what? what's non-compliant? Um, it's called MRGP. Remind us what that stands for. Massive road grant projects. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I'm guessing the learning the with acronyms. the road, uh, number of culverts per mile, mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. So can we ask you, Jen, to take the appropriate steps to find out what we need to do to spend this money and improve our roads? Mm hmm Okay. Thank you. Road, Madam Road Condition. I, I think you'd, you'd have to go over the non compliant stretches of the road, road to figure out to how to get them up to compliance. Right. Yeah. Because this money mm -hmm. would be used for that. Right, correct. Right. 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 So. And their app is slightly out of date. It'll be like a, there's a ditch, gravel missing. Yeah. You know, but then it's like the notation was made 2017 or 2018. So what is it now? Yeah, right. So is their app up to date, yeah. the data? So. It's going to take a little bit of work. Yeah. yeah. Figure that out. To even identify the out of yeah. compliance areas right. is a challenge. Is it still out of compliance or not? Right. Right. Does the road foreman have the road? Um, your, your new position. Do you have your proper work boots? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you want to buy some? I'll, I'll That's the I'll next buy. thing, right? I'll buy it for it. Write a letter and say, oh, you got to buy boots, but you need a motion. That's right. I hope she wants boots. I'll buy her boots. Okay. So the ash tree project, that's in process and should be completed in July. Um, You've had some calls about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was going to ask them why they cut some trees that weren't ash, but I guess I'm probably speaking ash when I say that. Hmm. 
They cut them. Because they needed firewood? Bass tree. They needed Bass firewood. does not make good firewood, but they cut a few at one of my road crosses for my nice. house. Mm. They usually have shade, etc. I'm like, why did they cut those basswood trees? But mm. maybe they thought they were ash. <laughs> the bark symbol. Awesome. Leaves yeah. are very different. <laughs> the leaves are very different. You got that right. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Anyway. So Sounds that's good. The anyway. schedule. It's nine o'clock. Anyway. Scott's losing attention. No, I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> I think that's yeah, the was, end of our topic. We're talking nonsense. We're talking leaves. Are we done? Yep. Okay. Anything else? Got to sign a few things. I will make a motion to adjourn. I think I'll, I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. aye.